So we're thrilled that you're taking part in our Primary Bright Stars programme. Here at the centre, um, we try to um, ensure that we provide everyday leadership opportunities, and that starts at primary age and goes right the way through to retirement. So Bright Stars has been um, running for 10 years now, co-created with local businesses and schools to give primary school pupils opportunities to build links with their local employers, meet positive role models and actually provide them with leadership opportunities. Um, building their confidence, building their self-belief, working as a team and um, also making a difference in their local communities. Um, so we're thrilled that you're on board with the programme for October this year. So I don't want you to assume, I don't want to assume, you know, everything about Bright Stars, but what is Bright Stars? So it's won lots of awards, which is fantastic. It's run by us. Um, we project manage it. And it's all about helping businesses to connect with local primary schools. Um, how they do that is they work with a group of school pupils to develop a little mini social enterprise. So it's the making a profit, but also it's about making a difference. So having creating a business that has a purpose. And we'll talk through examples of that later on in the slides. So the aims of Bright Stars, so as I said before, introducing primary pupils to leadership, to entrepreneurship um, from a young age, to raise aspirations, confidence and self-belief in young people, because we've seen over the years that sometimes children that aren't switched on to necessarily the typical um, traditional learning styles, will this all links to topic work, will be... Um, as part of Bright Stars might be switched on to just these enrichment opportunities and they're still learning all these things, but in a really fun, exciting way. So we want to also provide young people with an opportunity to see the world of work and also to sow that seed that actually you don't have to work for someone else. Um, you could actually start up your own business. Um, and also it links really nicely to positive citizenship, getting young people to actually um, hear their views on things that, that matter most to them and actually drive change through their social enterprising ideas. So it really does um, nurture creative thinking. You know, every year we hear from the children, their fabulous ideas of what they'd like to do. There's no shortage of uh, creative thinking there. We really want to nurture that and encourage that. And we normally find that this is a classroom approach. It could be open to any year group. That's for the schools to decide. And the pupils have to work together. So it really is a great way for young people to develop those teamwork and leadership skills and to recognise that we everybody has a skill. You can't be good at everything. Um, everybody, we must listen to one another. Um, so really great communication skills, really great leadership skills, and that everybody brings a different skill to um to make something successful, just like in, in work as well. Um, we hope that through linking Bright Stars, which is a very project managed, easy to be part of program, that helps to remove some of those barriers to engagement between schools and their local businesses. And even once the Bright Stars program is finished, we really do encourage those businesses to continue to, to, to nurture those relationships with their local school communities. So um, we've had a load of businesses take part in the Bright Stars program before and we're thrilled now that we can actually run two programs per year and that's really just to give schools and businesses a little bit more flexibility in terms of the winter program might link to some of the Christmas activities and um, and then the spring one which is in the April time might link to, um, to, to different things that the school have planned as well. So um, we're thrilled that it's funded by local businesses and we also have some other sponsors and grant funders as well that have enabled us to grow the programme and to offer this more opportunities to more young people and to the businesses as well. So that's great. So we're thrilled that um, you're involved in our October programme and I'll go through the, the dates with you. So our commitment to you um, we'll work with every school and business to ensure that you get the most from the Bright Stars experience. It's got to be easy. It's got to be manageable. Um, and really, we, we really encourage the schools and the businesses to really connect and, 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 and make the most of that, that partnership. Um, we offer training as well. So we've got a How to Talk to Tiny People session for the business mentors on the 5th of October at 10 o'clock. And that's online. And we'll make sure that we send you a link. 
and we'll also provide support at every stage as well. We'll check in on you and we'll see how everything's going. Um, we've also got a whole pack of resources and lesson plans because we never want to assume that the uh, the businesses have worked with, with primary pupils before um, and they can also be used by the teachers as well. They, they, you don't have to use them but we, we, we've had feedback that they're, off, they're often really, really helpful um, for those businesses to take them in and then use them and we'll talk through that in a little bit later in the presentation. And then actually, what is a social enterprise? Do we expect primary school pupils to know that? Um, so we've got a live Q&A session with a successful leader in Cumbria who runs their own social enterprise. More news to follow, but that will be on the 13th of October. And again, that's online at 1.15 and we'll send you the information. And the children can come to that. Um, it kind of kickstarts the, the, the Bright Stars programme and they can ask some questions and find out a little bit more about what a social enterprise is. We'll provide you all with a media pack um, which will include press templates and it'll have your logo on things for you to adapt as you see fit and, and really sort of shout about your Bright Stars um, journey and the fact that you're involved, whether that's a school sending information out to the parents, saying the business that you're working with um, or the businesses for you sending that out in your newsletters or to your employers as well. The step by step. So obviously as a school and a company, you've registered, which is fantastic. We're thrilled to have you on board. Um, this year, we're just doing things a little bit differently in the sense that we're producing this video and we're having some um, meetings that are just plotted over the next few weeks for you to come to. Um, and if you can't make those meetings, then obviously you've got this video here. But you should have by now have had being matched to your company as the school and the companies are matched and we really work hard with the companies to find out what schools they'd like to forge links with and um, and try to make sure that the company is is close to to that school as well so if you've been if you've actually matched that's great there are some schools that we're still looking to find business mentors for and that's absolutely fine we will get those matched as soon as possible it's like one big jigsaw puzzle at the moment but you will get from my colleague Hazel a matching email. So an introduction, an introduction to the teacher who's leading it from a Bright Stars point of view and also the business. Um, what we then suggest is that you get together and um, online or if you want to meet face to face, that's great. And that meeting's probably just going to be you, um, the teacher and the business mentor and maybe the head teacher as well and anybody else that might be involved in the Bright Stars competition from the business point of view. And just introduce yourself to one another and talk through um, as a school what year group might be involved, anything the companies might need to know about the children, what they're wanting to get from the scheme um, and the programme in general make sure that you've got the teacher's contact details and email. And from a business point of view, talk a little bit about what your business does, how you might help, who else might be involved, and make sure the school have got your contact details. At the end of that meeting, what we think works really, really well is that have a date in your diary for then the businesses to come back in and meet the children, introduce yourselves and your business and what you do, and, um, and maybe introduce the Bright Stars program if the children don't already know about it. And then also try and work out a day that's going to suit the businesses and the schools. Um, it might be the schools might be working on Bright Stars um, for several days per week. But what we think works really, really well is if a school actually says, right, Tuesday afternoon, one till two, that's going to be our Bright Stars afternoon. And then the business can start to plot that in the diary. And then they can know that that's the day that they come and visit the school, whether that's face to face that's or, or online. But that way you really do maximise on that support from the business. Um, so the way we see the scheme running is approach it like you would a business and those business mentors are there helping to the children to develop their mini business plans, talk about what a social enterprise is, marketing, all those sorts of things. Now, trading will start. Um, trading starts. Um, the schools receive £50 and that money is used to kickstart um, the children's social enterprises. Um, and then there is an eight week trading period. So the children have eight weeks to set up their own or mini social enterprise. Um, 
then when the, the and over those eight, eight weeks it's run as a competition so it's great because we have a bright stars page on our website all the schools get their own individual login and depending on the age of the children we really encourage the children to actually send us over some weekly updates of what they've been doing now this can be a little video it can just be some words and a couple of pictures if you are going to send pictures um, please do make sure you've got the relevant consents um, we do send a consent form that we do need to get signed out before the scheme starts and from a business point of view I know if you're going in it's tempting to take lots of photos but actually we recommend that you wait for the schools to actually send you those and then you know you've got the consents in place. So trading period eight weeks and it'll absolutely fly by and we're hoping that this, for this October program this might actually fit into some planned festive Christmas activities that you might have been doing anyway. Um, so from those weekly updates um, on our website, you'll be able to see what all the other schools are doing as well. And on the website, we have all the supporting documents as well that I'll talk through. So the, the press pack, the media pack that I talked about, the resources that we've got that I will talk about. So you will be able to pull all those documents off that Bright Stars website page and you'll get your own login um, for your school so that you can put your updates on. And then we have a panel of judges who have the impossible task of deciding on our um, winners because we run it like a competition. And based on those updates, um, we have some prize categories. Um, so best example of teamwork and leadership, most profitable social enterprise, best example of um, community engagement, and best use of technology. And you can decide as a school what um what one you want to go for and really highlight that in your updates and then we announce the winners and then at the end of the program we have a celebration event as well that brings everybody back together so bright stars key dates um so really um we've already matched some schools and businesses and we'll continue to do so right up until um the trading starts which will be on the 16th of october that's when the schools will be able to start using their 50 pound and spending that to set up and invest in any resources that they might need to kick start their social enterprise so you would have by now, you'll you'll get that introductory um email from the schools introducing you to the business mentors so to have that meeting to have a date for the business to come back and meet the children, introduce themselves and introduce the Bright Stars concept. Now that can take place between now and the 16th of October, or that, that meeting with the children can start the week commencing the 16th of October. And trading closes on the 11th of December, and then you'll all break up for Christmas for that well-earned Christmas break. And then we're going to get back together, announce the winners on the 10th of January. And then we're going to have a big online celebration event to celebrate everybody's successes on the 25th of Jan. So the other day to put in there, as I said, is the Friday, the 13th, Friday 13th of October, um, 1.15 till 2.15, when we will be doing the live Q&A with um, a leader um, and a, a, a managing director of a successful social enterprise. More details to follow. So when COVID hit, obviously we had to um, change the scheme to fully virtual. Um, and that's actually when we focused on the making a difference and children had to work to set up um, a campaign. We've obviously adapted the program and we've still kept that making a difference element of things but also the children can make profit um, in the process through through creating a, a business with a purpose but we take a lot of um, learning from that um, virtual year um, because some of the support we know that um, face to face is, is what the, the children really want. So we always say that the face to face meetings at the start, meeting the children, kickstarting it, um, introducing yourself should always be face to face. And we recommend at least three face to face meetings. But some of them could be virtual and some of them could be the person and the business mentor in the school dialing into the MD or some of your teams that might be outside of Cumbria. So really, you know, you, it's up to you can they can meet um, as many people as they as they need to, to meet. Um, so we recommend a bit of a, a blended approach. Obviously, if you want to go into the school 
face to face every week that's fantastic but it might not always be possible sometimes it might be quite front loaded in terms of helping the children brainstorm ideas get a little business plan together maybe get in roles do a marketing plan and then some of the other stuff might just be checking in to see how it's all going or if they've got an event or a coffee morning or they're making something going along and getting stuck in and helping them out um so as I say, what we ask for really from the businesses, from your point of view, we thank thanks so much for actually getting involved in the Bright Stars programme. For the businesses and actually the schools, um, on your um on your forms that you fill out, we just ask a couple of questions in terms of what you're hoping to get from the Bright Stars programme. And then we kind of ask that again at the end, and we can give that back to some of our funders and our corporate sponsors, just in terms of measuring some of the impact. Um, so as I said before with the after you've had that introductory email we encourage you to sort of um, meet with the teacher that's leading on it then meet the children and then um, help them along the way create um, approach it like they would a business so talk about what a business does talk about your business what's your role maybe help them get into roles help with a marketing plan help with a business plan and if you've got a marketing manager bring them in if you've got a project manager in your business bring them in um bring in people that you know from your business connections and 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 really sort of um make it make it fun and enjoyable for the children it, i think the children really get a lot from meeting local business role models and understanding a little bit more about different careers and, and job roles and things like that and then when it all finishes we will get back to you all just to fill out um a few more questions which is our survey and again we just need that to, to, to make sure that we can send our funders and just see that the program's having the impact that we hope so some ideas to get you started. Um, as I say, the only rule we have is just avoid the sponsorship routes to try to avoid an individual going off and doing a cycle ride or um, doing a sponsored silence and things like that. Approach it like you would in the spirit of the, the, the social enterprise competition, the setting up a business, a business with a purpose, something that they want to make better in their local community or for their school. So it could be that you're looking to get the community more involved in your school. So one school created a community cafe that promoted togetherness and actually brought in the community for coffee mornings and sold cake and uh, made made had a little stand and, and made produce and things to sell. Um, it could be... Um, I know that one school wanted to obviously just spread messages of positivity um, and so they made tie-dye t-shirts with positive messages on them and then they sold them. You might want to actually look at improving healthy eating, it could be making smoothies, it could be producing a really healthy family friendly cookbook um, and, um, and there's all sorts of ideas um, that you could that you could use a community garden to um, for your school to improve mental health and well-being for the children, um, the craft boxes, uh, the bird boxes, um, hampers for the community, spreading kindness, um, all of those things, addressing loneliness. So it could really, really be anything and it's got to be manageable for your school as well. Um, it could be products, it could be services, it could be a bit of everything. Um, but there was, there's lots and lots of ideas and you can have a look on our website at what previous um, schools uh, have done as well. So we have, as I said before, resources and lesson plans um, that will help our business mentors. Um, if you've never been into a primary school before, do not worry. These lesson plans are really easy and really simple. And um, you will have a link and a password to access those um, resources on the website page. I think that the one to start off with, which is really great, is introducing yourselves and what your company does and how you feel you're going to help the children. Then I think um, even before actually um, you get into what is a business and what is a social enterprise and things, then sometimes to kick start it just getting some post-it notes and brainstorming with the children some of their ideas what they might want to do in terms of a business in terms of if they make if their business is raising money for charity then what charity or if it's um to make a difference in the local community what might that be 
Um, so there's a mind map um, and template that you can use uh, or just good old fashioned post-its around a, a room that you can then talk around and see if there's any common themes. So I think at that point we're promoting the fact that it's important to listen to everybody's ideas. There's no such thing as a silly idea um, and to, to sort of like really think big. And then you can funnel those um, ideas into creating their little mini social enterprises. And that's when you can talk about well, what is a social enterprise and um, what do we do, how should we approach it like a business? What is a business? And so there's lots of those plans there. And then we've also got um, setting up. What do they do to set up their social enterprises? What job roles might they need? You don't have to, but potentially we've had in the past um, that the, the children get into to groups, marketing department, um, finance department or rotate round. Someone might be the MD, someone might be a project manager and they can apply for those roles if they weren't or do, do a classroom vote. Or you might just not decide to do that and everybody just works together. It's really up to you. Um, but we've got um, a plan for that in terms of how to put all those ideas and create those and put those into a business plan. Thinking of marketing, thinking of finance, thinking of roles they might need and skills, thinking about um, uh, how they're going to manage that money um, as well. Um, then there's a there is the session and the template on the managing the money, and there's also one on marketing. So. Um, Again, there's one on how to raise awareness of what they're trying to make better in their local community or for their school. Um, they might have, um, there's videos on our website as well. Um, they might want to design a logo um, and you might want to to raise more money by running, get, opening that out to the whole school and then the children decide on what the best logo is and it's a pound to enter, for example. Um, they might have a USP. So ours is to develop Cumbria's leaders for today and tomorrow. That's our mission statement um, because we believe better uh, leadership equals better lives for everybody. So the children might decide to have a mission statement or um, a tagline that they want to use or give themselves a name. But how are they going to do that? How are they going to raise awareness? Are they going to use Facebook? Are they going to use press? Are they going to talk to local businesses? So again, somebody from the organisation can come in and help them with that. And there's some plans along the way. You might not want to use those plans. That's fine. Again, if you've got infant school children, you're not going to necessarily, and tiny children, you're not going to sit down and do very detailed business plans. or And we don't expect large spreadsheets and lots and lots of detail. But it starts to just help the children approach it like they would a business and really understand how businesses sort of work. As I said before, weekly school updates are what we ask for from a competition element of things. If you don't want to be included in the competition element, that's fine. Just as long as we know that at the start and we don't expect to see any updates. Obviously, if we, if we don't see any updates, then we will contact you and just check that everything's OK. But we will provide you with the schools with a username and a login password. Um, and 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 at the very end of week eight, we do ask that you produce a little two minute film um, that the pupils can do and what they've learned and, um, and also um, what they did. And um, and we will use that at the celebration event, potentially. These are the prize categories, though. So um, best demonstration of being a great communicator, best example of staying positive and resilient, best social enterprise, business idea, best example of teamwork and collaboration most positive long-term impact that this potentially might have, best example of leadership, best business plan, best example of community engagement, best marketing idea, best example of technology use, most profitable social enterprise and best logo. So each week we ask that the children actually just tick what um, prize categories they would like to be considered for. And you can have a think about that as a school. And really then um, focus on telling us more about the, the why um, and, and what you've done and highlighting that for our judges. OK. We're thrilled that we've had some um, other funding to uh, we have our commercial partners. The fund, the Bright Stars has always been funded by local businesses because it was co-created with them. Um, but we've also had some grant money, which just means that we can actually grow the scheme in other areas um, like Carlisle and Wigton and Penrith, where maybe we haven't had the um, the uptake before. 
and we can also run um, those two programs based on feedback from the schools and the businesses who just wanted a little bit of um, greater flexibility and we want to keep the program manageable as well um so uh, yeah thank you to the Cumbria Community Foundation and the BB Family Fund the Cumberland Education Foundation Fund Genesis Homes Community Fund Herdy Fund the Evening Hill Grassroots Fund and the Owls Walter Trust Fund as well and then we've got our Allardale GDF funding um, through the community partnerships and that will see us working with um, focusing on schools working in those areas and partnering them with micro businesses charities third sector groups who um, might find our funding model a barrier to engagement so that's what we're using the, the grant funding for um, and then we're also thrilled to have um, some funding from nws um, which used to be known as llwr and again, we can focus in on developing and growing the programme and offering that opportunity to more schools in their area um, in a 15 mile radius of their site. So we're focusing on sort of Millham and Egremont and Cleetmore. Um, and again, working with some of those um, smaller businesses that might find funding a little bit of a barrier um, to participate in. Um, and obviously we, it's, it's quite, um, with BAE sponsorship in the South, um, we've managed to grow the scheme down there and they've joined companies like Oxley's who have funded it for many, many years um, to offer more schools in Barrow and South. And um, we continue to get our corporate partners um, as well in West Cumbria. Um, so we've always worked for many years with West Cumbrian schools. So we're just thrilled to be able to open it out um, because for us, we work countywide. That is our mission. So that probably feels really, really long. <laughs> I know I've had to go through a lot and ultimately um, we don't want you to be stressed in any way with Bright Stars. It's got to be manageable for the school. Like I've said, it's got to be, it can be as full on or as light touch as you want. The businesses, you've got those resources there. We hope that you find them useful. But if you've done this before or you feel confident and you've got your own ideas, that's also OK. Um, we you've got eight weeks. Um, you might not use all those eight weeks, um, but it will fly by. So you probably will. And, and just find the right support that works for you in terms of the school and the business as well. And from a business point of view, Bring in people that um, that can help you. Maybe it's um, people outside your business even. We also find it's a great development opportunity for graduates and apprentices as well. And with the fact that we've got all the lesson plans, it, it, it can be really easy um, and it can build confidence as well. And actually, the, if the, the, the volunteers are a little bit younger, then the primary school pupils actually can, can relate to them. Um, you know, but ultimately, we want this to be fun. So it's got to be fun for the children as well. Um, and we really have we've seen over the many, many years of running this, the difference and the impact that this has on the children can often be life changing. Um, we see them growing in confidence. Um, you know, their aspirations are growing. They're dreaming just that little bit bigger. And hopefully we hope that the framework of Bright Stars will just help you to continue those social enterprise ideas um, and maintain those links with with the businesses. Finally, one thing that I should just say at the end is that how you manage that money. So at the end, um, you get to keep the £50 seed funding. We don't want it back. Um, and, um, and and at least half the money um, that you raise um, goes back to, if it's a charity the children decide to raise money for, goes to that chosen charity. And we really do um you know, encourage you to reach out and get them involved in the projects and things. Or if it is, or half of that money goes back into kind of that purpose, that social enterprise, um, continuing to develop that community garden, for example, or um, into promoting healthier eating within the school, whatever that might be. And half of it can be um, kept for the school. And sometimes the teachers will leave the children to decide what they spend that money on um and um but yeah just have fun if you've got any questions or queries then please just don't hesitate to get in touch with myself or my colleague hazel who you would have also got some emails through from who's project managing the program um 
and just we hope that you have an absolutely fantastic experience with our October Bright Stars programme. So thank you.